What is up guys, John the Retro Bro back again with another video. And today I wanted to show you guys something really cool. It's something I had actually been thinking about doing for a very long time, probably like a couple of years now. Uh, ever since I got into the pie, uh, it's, it's sort of been a hobby to me and I always wanted to build my own arcade cabinet. So I finally made the plunge. I'll be talking about how I built the cabinet, what sort of buttons I use for it, what layout uh, as far as what programming slash board retro pie image I'm using. Um, so I really just wanted to talk about this little project that I did guys. And um, if you're interested in building a cabinet yourself, this will be a good video for you. Um, maybe you're not sure where to start. Maybe you're not sure, like you're not sure how hard it's gonna be. So guys, let's talk about it. Let's talk about building your own bar top arcade cabinet. So guys, the first thing I knew I was gonna do was obviously I was gonna use a Raspberry Pi 3. So the Raspberry Pi 3 um, is, a, is a very easy architecture. It's got a lot of retro Pi support, Laka support. There's a whole bunch of different types of front ends you can use. So obviously I knew I wanted to use a Raspberry Pi 3. I went with a three on this one just because that's what I'm the most familiar with. I really enjoy using Retro Pi. Unfortunately, at the making of this video, Retro Pi isn't very stable on the Raspberry Pi 4 yet. So that is why I went with the Raspberry Pi 3. So the next thing, guys, what type of button layout did I want to use? Um, and what size did I want to make? So I went on Etsy actually, and I'll put the link in the description below. Um, I found a pre-cut board that essentially came in, I believe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about nine or 10 pieces. So you did need to assemble it. It was already pre-cut for the San Juan joysticks. So um, pretty DIY project, nothing insane. It came with screws. Um, everything was labeled pretty well. You did need some wood glue. It was um, not complicated. I'm not, a very much of a person who, when it comes to working with my hands, I'm not gonna lie guys, not my strong point. Um, so if I can do this, pretty much anyone can do this. Again, this is a, you know, MDF board. You did have to sand it, as you can see I painted mine. It came in just a regular wood color. So I went ahead and I painted it black and blue and sanded it down obviously. So there, there is a little work involved. The cool thing about this one, guys, is it does have up to a, it says 22 inch. I went ahead and put a 19 inch in mine. I actually had an old 22 inch, but because it was too wide, it the, the shell of the, the TV was too wide, so I couldn't fit it. So I went to Best Buy, guys. I bought myself a 19 inch monitor, they're like $69. You don't need anything crazy if you're playing retro. It's a 720p. And you know, that's all I feel you really need. I did go ahead and I built my own retro pie image, which will be available on Arcade Punks, guys. So there is over 3,200 arcade games on this one. Full Neo Geo library. It's 268 Neo Geo games. And MAME games, Final Burn Alpha games. If you're looking for an arcade image, that's definitely the one you want. Now, as far as joysticks, guys, and buttons, I actually did wanna go with a eight button layout. Um, unfortunately, this one is only cut to six. I did want eight for the PS1 games. So, and then I couldn't drill additional holes just because there really wasn't that much room. So some PS1 fighters will work, the earlier PS1. Tekken 3 still fortunately does work because that was only, you only needed six buttons for that one. And then obviously two player. So I went on Amazon guys, and I'll, again, I'll post a link in the description. They are Sanwa joysticks. The buttons are mis, uh, mixed and matched. It's a pretty good kit for $40. And then it comes with the select button here, start. Um, so overall pretty sturdy work as far as the, the, the buttons go. I do let my kids play on it, so I am always like concerned they're gonna break some buttons. Fortunately, the kit comes with a bunch of extra buttons, guys. So if you do happen to, you know, maybe bust up a couple, it is it is pretty, you know, it is pretty easy to swap them in and out. The marquee, guys, actually I got made at 
Um, I, I did the imaging for the marquee. Um, I went ahead and just made that image on my computer and then I sent it over to a website called Game Room Solutions. They actually have a YouTube channel as well. Um, being the holidays, it did kind of take a little bit longer for, for myself to get it, unfortunately. So I did take two weeks to actually get the marquee. Uh, but once I got it, I did go ahead and put it, I actually super glued it to the plexiglass. Typically there is a slot, which there is in this one. I just thought the slot was too small. Plus I wanted to have easy access because I did put a light behind here guys. And the light actually does, you know, change colors and you know, you can make it flash and whatnot. So it's the way I did it was I just Velcroed it on the pixie glass to the wood and then it's easy access. I could easily take it off and on to get back to the light to change the batteries. It's a battery operated light. So guys, as you can see, um, I would say this project probably took me about a week. It wasn't nothing crazy. Like again, it was something I always wanted to do. So I finally just pulled the trigger. The hardest part, the, 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 the most time consuming part, honestly guys, was the retro pie image, which is already done. So if you do build your own, you can use that image, throw it in your pie, that'll be easy for you. But other than that, I would say you did have to put the wood glue on it, let it sit for a good 12 to 24 hours for that to cure. And then once you had it together, you needed to sand it. And I actually painted it after I put it together because it is MDF. If you know anything about MDF type of wood, it absorbs paint like a sponge. So if you paint it before putting it together, the wood can actually expand and then you'll have a hard time putting it together. So that took a couple days once I painted it and then I had to let it dry. So once it was painted guys, to throw the buttons in, everything else, super simple. Like I said, it took me about a week, but that was my first one. And guys, it's totally worth it. Uh, the actual barcade wood itself was only $108 from an Etsy seller, a very good Etsy seller. I would definitely recommend them. So I'm going to put their link in the description below. And then I'll put a link for the joysticks guys as well. So guys, let me know what you think. Again, it was something I really wanted to do for a long time. Um, again, if you're, if you're trying to build your own project, let me know, reach out and then we'll talk, I'll talk you through it, help you out. So anyways, guys, that is it. That is my arcade cabinet. We do plan on doing a stand up one next. I'm super excited about that. I mean, a full arcade cabinet. Um, the final cost of this guys was probably right around 300 bucks with everything. Uh, that's from like the wood glue to the Velcro, the marquee. So I would say guys for 300 bucks, it's totally worth it. I would much rather have this than say arcade one up to where you're limited to, you know, five games and then if you do want to mod it you're out another 200 just to mod it so it can get really expensive to, arc, to, to mod those arcade one-ups that's before buying a riser so guys if you're interested in arcade gaming emulation this is definitely the way to go guys let me know what you think comments below i'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts on that note guys retro bro out do you even retro see you on the next video